still can't do it. No, there's another one as well with touching your ear and your and nose. And it's I can't just do all that. too much. Yeah, right brain, left brain thing. I can't do it. But something that is a lot more knowledgeable is and more interesting. More interesting is um, <laughs> climate change, which is dominating the news at the moment, and so it probably should be because it's a very important topic with uh, apparently very challenging consequences as well. One of the aspects of climate change that's been talked about is emissions trading. So tell us a little bit more about that is Peter Fitzpatrick from the Motor Trade Association. Welcome Peter. Welcome back. Welcome Welcome back. Again. Yes, good to see you. <laughs> Peter, please uh, initially just give us a bit of an overview. What is emissions trading? It's a means of, of trading in the carbon emissions that industry, and you can even go down to individual level, that people actually uh, in using energy, of course, that actually then emits carbon. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting fact, most people forget about this, and we should have a lovely debate one day about nuclear power. We could have a really good <laughs> session on that. But, uh, but one of the things people say about nuclear byproducts is you know, that the waste can, can be there for 20,000 years, and what do you do with it, and so on. One of the little known facts is you know, what is the half life of carbon? It's, it's close to infinity. So once mm -hmm. you put it into the atmosphere, it's there virtually forever. Mm. And so, you know, we've got a world now that's just loading up with all this carbon. And we are going to see in Australia, uh, both political parties have said it, they've, they're a bit low-key, they do a bit of poly-speak on this, because when you introduce carbon trading schemes, you're going to see some inflationary pressures on petrol, you'll certainly see it on electricity bills, and it could impact on jobs, say, in the coal mining industry. Mm. So you watch over the election cycle, you'll watch John Howard and Kevin Rudd, they'll they'll sort of dance around this issue they'll be trying to show their green credentials but they won't be sort of really spelling out how these schemes are going to work but John Howard has said Australia will have one by 2011 nationally uh, and uh, and the Labor Party is also I'm not quite sure whether they put a date on it yet but you, you, your viewers out there you can rest assured within the next four to five years industry certainly will be dealing in in carbon trading for the amount of the fuel, fossil fuels that you use, and it could well get down to household level. So, Peter, is the main motivation behind emissions trading actually to reduce the amount of carbon in the it, atmosphere? It's to overall. reduce our emissions, our, our harmful emissions, into into the uh, into the atmosphere, and you can do it on an industry level. There's uh, uh, there's a number. There's a cap and uh, and, and trade uh, system. Uh, there, there are other systems like offsets, there's baseline and credit. Uh, I, don't, I won't go into those because <laughs> we don't have time, but they're the sort of systems. The cap and trade is the way that we would probably do it, where you set a finite cap, monetary cap, and people within specific industries will then be told that if they go over their limit, they have to buy more credits. If they go under it, they can sell them. So you get into a trading situation. So if you've got an industry that suddenly decides it's going to to become more environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. it's going to finish up with credits that it can sell, so it actually becomes a benefit to them. Uh, and those that don't do anything, if you've got an old coal-burning power station and it just keeps on chugging mm -hmm. out uh, carbon, then it's going to progressively have to pay more and more for that, so the cost of their electricity is going to be higher than, say, one that's operating on wind or solar or some other form of non-carbon emission. Mm -hmm. So it's going to drive industry towards being become much more environmentally friendly. And look, we have to do this. We're starting to see you know, really bad signs of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, bad storms and we're starting to see ocean levels rising. We're seeing glaciers and uh, ice peaks melting. I don't know whether you saw on the news last night all those naked people standing on the ice, <laughs> why, yeah. they, why they did that. But there's a glacier that's been there a million odd years mm. and it's got about 40 years to go. So, you know, we're really going to have to move on this stuff and... Mm. Uh, so and, and it's not working at the moment in Australia. You know, there's no... It's open slather. And, and whilst we're only 1.5% of the world's emissions, we need to do more. So if everybody does get behind this and emissions trading does begin to boom, can you see much of an improvement happening immediately or it's more of a long-term thing that you, we won't see any um, improvements for at least, you know, 20, 30 years? Well, Kyoto is typically... It's an international agreement. Uh, and that, that, is, that has seen some nations, some of the developed nations, cut their emissions, Europe in particular. Others, like China, have, have not really done much mm -hmm. about this at all. Uh, Australia and the US are not signatories to Kyoto mm -hmm. the Protocol, and I won't go into the reasons for that to take <laughs> a program in itself. But, but, uh, but on, a, on a national level, yes, w what we would do it is we would progressively cut the levels <laughs> back. So when you have your cap mm -hmm. and trade, you just keep on cutting the cap back. So each year or each five years, you would find that you'd be progressively reducing it. 
I'd like to see it introduced on a personal level because that would really set the cat amongst the pigeons mm. because that would mean then that people, your use of gas at home, your use of uh, uh, oil, if you're using heating oil, your use of uh, electricity at home, everyone would be given free to start with a level of credits and as you pay your electricity yeah. bill as you pay your gas bill as you put petrol in your car and all the rest of it you start to progressively use up those credits now if you want to drive around in a great big four-wheel drive that uses lots of petrol and you want to have your lights on all night you're going to pay a lot more for it people who don't say pensioners who are, or other people on fixed incomes who are very frugal and and introduce saving mechanisms in their house change the light bulbs do all those sorts of things they'll be able to sell them mm. to those people who are so what will eventually happen is progressively the level will come down because people will start to look for mm. more fuel efficient ways of doing things it'll hit people in the hip pocket and and it will be a benefit for those who are frugal. So you're rewarding the good behaviour, which I think is a good thing. Mm, absolutely. <coughs> so, Peter, with emissions trading, and we've talked a lot about emissions trading being about the industry, and I love the concept of it being on a personal level. I'm yes. not sure how the polys would get that one through. But um, assuming it just happens on an industrial level, mm. how um, will it affect us as individuals, say motorists, for example, the uh, emissions trading coming into play? Well, I think there'll be more emphasis by, uh, by oil companies, for example, of, you know, that you'll be seeing them starting to use biodiesel more. I, I'm not sure whether on this program last week I talked about McDonald's in the UK running all of their... Uh, maybe no, I didn't. I was somewhere no, else. I to you about that, yeah. Where they, McDonald's in the UK are running 150 of their trucks... Sorry, 1,500 of their trucks on their used vegetable oil out of their vats. Wow. Uh, wow. As, as biodiesel. So mm. you know, there's, there's one way an industry is suddenly going to get a whole lot of carbon credit. So mm. I think what you'll see is you'll see greater use of biodiesel, maybe a, a move towards ethanol. Uh, a gas would probably be at a, at a, a, in a greater credits for that than probably petrol. Diesel will probably have different credits, so you're likely to see greater emphasis on, on diesel fuel. The shift across to hydrogen the shift to electric power in vehicles. You know, car manufacturers are going to say, wow, there's an advantage to us mm -hmm. here if we can get a lot of electric cars on the road because we're going to get a whole lot of credits for that and it's going to enable us to do more research and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, you want my spin on this? I reckon every house in Australia should have solar panels on the roof which should supplement your power. Mm. And if, uh, eventually when you get your little electric car, you go to and from work and you plug it into the wall. Mm. You know, we've got so much sun in this place. You know, we why shouldn't just quietly sitting away on the roof, why mm. hasn't every house that's being built... Well, the reason is it's, it's, it's more expensive. But mm. if everyone's doing it, the cost of those solar panels will come right down. That's right. Mm. And it just... It, it's a clean form of energy. It doesn't cost mm. us anything. It doesn't pollute anything. And yet you may be able to meet half of the power bills in a house by having solar panels working, particularly in the summer when you've got this, this masses of sun that we've got. Mm. And can that be stored, um, for example, over summer it absorbs so much and then during yeah, winter can, it, it can It can be stored and the other thing you can do is you can sell it back to the, uh, the, to the electricity, into the grid. Mm. Mm. So yeah. you can actually, if, you, if, you, if you're away and nothing's mm. happening in your house, you're actually getting, instead of getting a bill from Western Power, or whatever, like Synergy and all these other people these days, mm. you actually get a cheque. Good. Well, that sounds really good. We're so. really just touching the side. So much more to talk about. Peter, obviously you're back next Monday, I hope. Yes, we are. <laughs> we should have a nuclear debate maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> if we've got the time. In six minutes we'll have a mini nuclear debate, mate. So <laughs> no, mini, mini nuclear war, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks for raising our awareness again of this really important issue. And if we all had a crack at something, some of these apparently expensive solutions would actually be a lot cheaper. So thanks, Peter, for raising our awareness once again. Okay, Matt. Good to see you see as well. See you next Monday. <laughs> see you next Monday.